to the Talent Optimization Podcast, the go-to podcast for CEOs and HR professionals wanting to bridge the gap between the strategy and tactical implementation of talent optimization within their organizations. Through interviews, predictive index, and personal experience, your host, Tracy Shirk, helps you discover the facets of talent optimization from both a CEO and HR perspective to truly create the dream team for your organization. Are you ready? Let's get started. Welcome to Talent Optimization. My name is Tracy Shirk, and I'm the Chief Talent Officer here at Elevated Talent Consulting. Are you ever asked the question, how do you do it all? Or how do you keep all the balls in the air? I know that that is something that I get asked a lot. And, you know, one of the key conversations that I've been hearing about a lot within the HR community and just in the small business community has been regarding burnout. And how do we ensure that we take care of our managers, that we take care of ourselves? And that's really what we want to talk about today, because the opposite of that is something that my friends over at Real Good Venture call boss holes, right? And we will have more conversations about boss holes, and I'm actually having Sarah Best on the show here in a couple of weeks, but they're another fantastic podcast if you're looking for one. But what I really want to chat about with that is when we become our worst selves is typically when we're stressed out and when we're not taking care of ourselves. And I don't think any one of us come into work every day and say, hey, I want to be a boss hole today, borrowing from, from Real Good Ventures, or I want to be a jerk today, right? Like we come in and say, hey, we're going to do the best that we possibly can. And then guess what? Things start piling up, whether it is the 72 emails or the 42 phone calls or the requests that are coming in. And it's going, how do I juggle all of these things and do it at my best? Here's the deal. If you are not working at your best because you're trying to give so much to others, it's not going to show up in a healthy way, right? So I attended the Optima conference through Predictive Index a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, one of the the, the things that came out of that was a conversation in a keynote with James Clear, who is the author of Atomic Habits. And one of the things that James had talked about is, you know, we do not rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. And you heard me talk about this last week on the podcast when I had a conversation with Damon Clark about this. And here's the deal. We create systems in our lives all of the time. If those systems are serving us, great. We can continue to go and do all the things and have people look at us and say, how do you do it all, right? But when we don't have great systems that allow us to really be our best selves, those are still systems that are just not serving us. So let me give you an example. Do you have a system in place where when the alarm goes off, you actually hop out of bed every morning and go do whatever that thing is? You know, that's a habit, right? And what we know is that if we have that 1% change that we can make, it can change everything else. So for me, you know, one of those habits that we have every morning is, you know, there is my alarm clock, which is my son, Ethan, walks into my room around 5 a.m. He's like, mom, are you ready? So I hop out of bed and I take him to weightlifting in the morning. Then I come home and I jump on the Peloton. That series of events is a system that is in place so that I can be my best self. I can tell you the days that I don't jump on that Peloton. I'm off the entire rest of the day, right? So when we talk about how do we create the environment for ourselves to be our best self at home and at work, sometimes this is called self-care, right? And so we have a couple definitions of self-care that I want to talk about. So the Oxford Dictionary says that self-care is the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health. Self-care is the foundation of health care, but is outside of formal health in social care systems, right? That's a mouthful for me. Sherm has a definition that they describe self-care as the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, particularly during periods of stress in any of the self-care domains. So my question for you, my dear listener, is how are you creating that system so that you're taking care of yourself every day? 
And guess what? There's times where you're going to fail at this a hundred times, but there's also times where once you get into it, it's easy to keep going. James Clear talks about, you know, the, the goal trackers and never missing twice, right? So what I want you to think about is what do you need to do to take care of yourself? For me, there's a couple key things that I know that I need to do. One of those is I know I need to move my body every single day. Another one is I know that I need to have some sort of affirmations or meditation in my day. And when I don't have that or don't do that, my day feels completely off. The other thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I really connect with my family and that I have that downtime for me, right? So how do you do that? One is you need to make sure that you're protecting that time that you have. So we all have something fun called our phones that is an incredible time suck. You know, one of the things that I did, one of the systems I put in place is I took all of social off my phone. I took the games off my phone. I know Wordle, right? But I also took Facebook off my phone. I took LinkedIn off my phone. Now, if we go on vacation and I want to post pictures of that, I'll put Facebook back on my phone. And I notice how quickly I get addicted to it. And my little Apple tells me your screen time went up this week by 30%. I'm going, all right. Time to take it off again, right? So how are we protecting our time so that we're truly taking care of ourselves? And that's a question I really want you to ask yourself. So for those of you thinking about this going, okay, are we going in, how do we take care of ourselves in work, Tracy? Are we going in, how do we take care of ourselves in life? Well, guess what? It is the same pot of soup and it is the same skill set that you're just going to take into a different domain. So with that being said, you know, I hope you're flying again. I hope that you're out traveling and exploring our wonderful country and our world again. And if not, how many of you remember the saying of put your air mask on for yourself first before you put it on for someone else? Are we doing that at work right now? Are we doing that at home? And what does that look like, right? So my biggest challenge to you and takeaway for today's little lesson is what are those key things that you're doing to really take care of yourself so that you can be your best self at work and at home? Because when we don't do that, again, we can show up like a boss hole, according to Sarah Best, which I love, but we don't want to show up in that way. And one of the conversations that I've been having with many of my clients over the last couple of weeks is how do we support our staff, especially our new staff coming in, ensuring that they have the training that they need to truly be successful. So we've really dug into this, you know, into do they have the training that they need? What does winning look like to them? And what it keeps coming back to is the managers keep telling me, I don't have the time for this. I don't have the time for this. And what happens is we have this bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Where if a manager or a leader does not have time to truly train the individuals coming in and providing that system for them to be successful, and that system could be a series of video trainings. The system could be a period of check-ins. The system could be a new hire buddy program that is put in place. You know, the system could be third party trainings, you know, but that new hire needs to know what does winning look like for me? And that manager also needs to know what does winning look like for them, right? So the question that keeps coming up is I don't have time or capacity to do this. So my response is well, is this then going to keep? creating that same issue? Or are you going to somehow figure out how to take a new path and to get out of this? They kind of look at me, they're like, I don't know how. So I know I'm going to jump into analogies today. It's one of my favorite things ever. But I so often hear folks say, you know, the light's at the end of the tunnel, the light's at the end of the tunnel. Two years later, I'm like, how's it going? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm like, have you gotten through the tunnel yet? Nope. The tunnel just keeps expanding, right? Here's the deal. We always have a choice. At some point in time, you have to flick the light on inside of the tunnel versus always looking to the end of it and saying, what can I do right now for where I'm standing and what I'm standing in? 
because all we have is our present moment. I can't change what happened in the past. And I can't always predict what happens in the future. What I can handle and what I do have control over is what is going on right now in front of me. And if I don't have my mind right to be able to 100% focus on what's in front of me, I'm not going to be productive in my work. And the stuff is going to keep piling on, right? So if we're going to stick with this tunnel analogy for a second, at some point you need to figure out where is the off-ramp and maybe we need to take the scenic route and get on top of the mountain and look at the scenery versus staying in the tunnel, knowing that it is going to maybe take a little bit longer, but maybe that's what we need is a little bit of space to step back and say, how do I take care of myself so I'm not running so fast with those individuals around me? So with that being said, as we're talking about self-care today, and of course this ties right into mental health and this ties right into so many of those conversations we've been having throughout the pandemic, turn that light on for where you're at right now. You know, one of the things that we know at Elevated Talent is that we can't complain all the time about what's not working. We have to create solutions for it and look at it and say, hey, how do we create a roadmap, a system that will really allow us to look at this in a way that is reasonable to get these things done? So I have three different systems that I use pretty much on a daily basis. And so for those of you that are going, I just want to know what this is, Tracy. Guess what? These are what works for me. They may or may not work for you, but I want you to think about what yours are. But what I know is it's easier to pick up someone else's stuff and play with it than it is to stare at a blinking cursor on your screen with a blank page. So those three things that I do for self-care, one is Peloton, as we talked about at the beginning of our conversation. The second one that we do from a personal standpoint is I do a morning affirmation every morning. And this is something that I actually got from a keynote at a Wisconsin Sherm conference. And I will tell you, I went back and looked and I cannot figure out who said this. And I love to give credit where credit's due. So if you know whose website this is on, I want to make sure that I link back to him and I can't figure out who he is. So here are the daily affirmations that I do every morning. And again, I kind of borrowed this from a keynote at a Wisconsin Sherm conference and then adapted it for me. But here's my affirmations. I have control over my thoughts, feelings, and choices. I'm healthy, vital, active, happy, and successful human being. I affirm today that all tissues and organs in my body are functioning perfectly, and that is the way that it is supposed to be. I affirm today that the technology and systems that I use to support me are working for me to accomplish my goals. I am more relaxed than ever because I choose peaceful, loving thoughts. I am creating an atmosphere of ease and confidence. I have set specific goals and planned action steps for their accomplishment. I feel better now. Nature uses the food that I eat and the air that I breathe, the water that I drink, and the rest that I get to rebuild, repair, and revitalize me for the future. Radiant energy flows through me. I affirm today that money is plentiful and in abundant supply. Money flows freely and constantly into my life as I render loving service to all mankind. So that's my daily affirmation. With that, I will say three things I'm grateful for, because guess what? There is something crazy about we get what we think about, right? So if I choose deliberately to think about things I'm grateful for, I'm going to get more of those things. And you know what? That allows me to be better at work. It allows me to be better at home. So. What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for every single one of you listening. I'm grateful for every one of my clients that entrust elevated talent in what we do to help them elevate their business. And probably first is I'm incredibly grateful for my family and for the crazy things that happen within that and the laughs I get every day for my two boys. So those are two of the systems that I have in place, right? So Let's think about timing. Peloton takes me 20 minutes a day. This little affirmation that we just did, I think it's about three minutes. And then the third thing that we put in place is we have a weekly team check-in noting three wins for the week. So often we get to the end of our week and we're like, what the heck did we do? Or I didn't get 72 things done. If we can focus on what are those three wins for the week and then say, hey, what did I learn this week? 
And what is my plan for next week? Guess what? I'm going to be able to move things forward and not get stuck in the shoulds that will completely kill my motivation. So with that, we of course have takeaways after every episode. So our takeaways for our executives listening in is what boundaries do you have in place to care for you so that you do not become the boss wall and, you know, kind of that jerk in your business, right? Of course, the credit to, to Real Good Venture there. And then what systems are, you know, really in place for you? And I'm talking to our HR leaders now, right? So what systems do you have in place for you with your employees, to ensure that you can give amazing customer service, but that your staff can also be somewhat self-sufficient. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to meet your business outcomes while creating a high-performing organization and ensuring you are still providing that amazing customer service internally. So with that, I hope that you can name three things you're incredibly grateful for this week and have a system in place for how to take care of you so you can best serve in this beautiful world that we're in. With that, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next week here at Talent Optimization. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Talent Optimization Podcast. You'll find more tools and resources for CEOs and HR professionals looking to bridge the strategies versus implementation gap of talent optimization at elevatedtalentconsulting.com. We've also created a free, valuable resource for you to begin bridging the gap called the Talent Optimization Foundation Membership Program. You can access it for free at elevatedtalentconsulting.com forward slash foundation. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode to learn more about talent optimization and creating a dream team for your organization.